Namaste, Namaskar, Vanakam, Sastriyakal, and welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali. And today we're going to be dissecting Imran Khan's UN speech a little bit. So we did the Howdy Modi, we did a Modi speech, an Imran Khan speech, and India's response to Imran Khan's speech. So if you haven't seen those videos already, check out our homepage. We have lots of them you can look at. But we are going, his Imran Khan speech, just if you didn't watch our videos, made my blood boil. And um, it, because there was just so much hate in it. And um, on the UN forum as a leader, just not what we expected at all. And um, so we're going to kind of go through a little bit of uh, India's response and his speech and kind of dissect it and see, like, you know, if I said that, if my husband said that, I think we'd be in jail right now and interrogated by the police, by the FBI, by the CIA. Like, um, so just interesting to see uh, a prime minister on the UN floor using such venom. And uh, so we're going to dissect his speech a little bit and talk about it and uh, start it up. Let's dissect Imran Khan's United Nations speech. Let's see India's reaction first. Unfortunately, what we heard today from Prime Minister Imran Khan of Pakistan was a callous portrayal of the world in binary terms. A script that fosters divisiveness at the United Nations, attempts to sharpen differences and stir up hatred are, simply put, hate speech. Exactly. The invocation of phrases such as pogrom, bloodbath, racial superiority, pick up the gun, and fight to the end reflect a medieval mindset. Yeah. Prime Minister Imran Khan's threat of unleashing nuclear devastation qualifies as brinksmanship. Was it a hate speech? Was it a hate crime? Can someone be sued? Every country has their own laws and definition on what freedom of speech, and when that crosses the line, hate speech is loosely defined globally as public speech of hate or encouraging violence towards a person or a group based on their religion, race, or sexual orientation. Was Imran Khan's union speech really a hate speech? Let's see. A country was plundered by the elites, the, the ruling elite. Mm -hmm. Muslim women Blaming wearing hijab, it's become an issue. Yeah, suicide bombers can be It's women. become an issue in some countries. Advocates for a woman can take off her clothes in countries, but she can't put on more clothes. It is marginalizing Muslim communities. Terrorism, blaming the West and we for all origins. know that yeah. marginalization leads to radicalization. Some of the people who end up as militants in Syria and other places were from marginalized Muslim communities. No one did to research that before 9-11, the majority of suicide attacks in the world were by Tamil tigers, who were Hindus. Yeah. Referred to United States presence in Afghanistan as occupying 70,000, 70,000 people killed in a war we had nothing to do with. No Pakistani was involved in 9-11. <laughs> Osama bin Laden was caught in Pakistan. Prime Minister uh, Modi told me that, you know, there were terrorist attacks from Pakistan. Terrorism. I said, we have problems with you. There are terrorist attacks, which we know are instigated from, uh, by India in Balochistan, a 20-year year old Kashmiri boy whose father Paris. said was radicalized by the security forces in Kashmir, blew himself up on an Indian convoy. But then we discovered they were trying to push us in the fat of blacklist. FAFT's subgroup held a review meeting with Pakistan officials on issues of anti-money laundering and combating finances of terrorism regimes. From the action plan of FAFT, Pakistan has not cleared everything, and it's when not because India of India. went against 11 United Nations Security Council resolutions, which say that the people, Kashmir is a disputed territory, and the people of Kashmir 
have the right of self-determination. They went against that. They went against Sim Simla Accord, which is about bilateral you know, uh, Fair? sorting out our differences through bilateral means, went against that. They actually went against the Indian Constitution. Illegally, they revoked Article 370, which gave Illegally? Kashmir the special status. UN resolution is a three-step process in a sequential manner. Pakistan withdraws from German Kashmir. India reduces its forces, and then India can conduct a plebiscite after ensuring the return of refugees. The plebiscite is the last step. The first step is from Pakistan. Article 370 introduced as a temporary measure by the Indian Constitution, and after 70 years, the Indian Constitution revoked it to normalize German Kashmir, the rest of India. None of the Indian Constitution powers said it was unconstitutional. Article 370 is an Mr. Narendra Modi is a life member of RSS. This RSS believed in the ethnic cleansing of Muslims from India. Pakistan minorities went from 23% to 3%. An Indian Muslim population grew from single to double digits. Indian has more Muslims than Pakistan. Pick any Indian platform, you will find diversity amongst them. At one point, Indian had a Muslim president, a Sikh prime minister, and a Christian ruling party president. Check out Pakistan UN delegation. They that fired made the only Narendra woman they had. Modi in 2002 do a pogrom against Muslims in Gujarat when he, he was the chief minister. Imran Khan compared Narendra Modi to Hitler, directly blamed him for communal riots in Gujarat. Narendra Modi is cleared of any wrongdoing. What is going to happen when the curfew is lifted will be a bloodbath. There'll be a bloodbath. Kashmiris will be further radicalized. The 180 million Muslims of India are thinking right now. Aren't they watching these Kashmiris? Aren't they watching? What do you think? Don't you think that the Muslims will be radicalized in India? And I'm talking about 180 million people. And when they get radicalized, there will be some incident in India somewhere down the line. And Mr. President, what about 1.3 billion Muslims who are watching this? And they know that it is only happening in Kashmir because they're Kashmiri Muslims. This is not happening to Kashmiri Hindus. They know that this is happening because of their religion. So what do you think they will be thinking? Article 370 removal is not based on religion. People will, in the 1.3 billion Muslims, someone will pick up arms. I'm in Kashmir. I have heard about and there are rapes, Indian army going into homes, soldiers. I, would, I, would I want to live this humiliation? Would I want to live like that? I would pick up a gun. You're forcing people. The UN is booing you. You are forcing people into radicalization. On the UN floor, someone said he would pick up a gun to fight Indians. That's never happened. If a convention war starts, and it could, anything could happen, but supposing a country seven times smaller than its neighbor is faced with the choice, either you surrender or you fight for your freedom till death, what will we do? India is not invading I ask Pakistan. Myself this and my belief is, la la illa, there is no God but one. And number one action must be that India must lift this inhuman curfew. Lawsuit filed against Donald Trump for saying, get them out of here in his own rally to move prosecutors. He was filed a lawsuit. Islam versus other religions, called for terrorists as boys, asked for help against his own country's leadership, guaranteed bloodbath when the curfews lifted, and asked the UN to lift the curfew so he would pick up a gun, said Indian Muslims would join the fight against India. Is it a hate speech? Is it a crime? If a common man says the same thing in a public forum, though they put in jail or interrogate him, can someone be prosecuted for using such language on the UN floor? Why would the UN allow such a speech and for that much time? 
Can Modi file a deductible nation suit? And is there a legal case for a hate speech here? This is the answer. There is no place for a hate speech, especially tensions are high in this business. Yeah. We are not lawyers. And no. we. this is just kind of like an overview, but that definitely was hate filled and um you know can somebody sue him can you know why did they allow him to speak that long on the un floor when it what i mean they were booing him yeah it was so bad you know how did they let him go on for so long and 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 it was also videotaped around the world you know people could watch it and yeah. so it just feels hate in the people that believe in what he's saying as a prime minister yeah and because he's a prime minister it's worse than like having like a common man saying this stuff because the people who like him will get like riled up and will get wanting the stuff he wants and what he's saying right and it's so violent and so hate-filled and people don't want that we don't need that in the world and honestly if i said this if my husband said this like uh, in the street on twitter anywhere like the fbi would be knocking at our door questioning either pulling us to the police station and questioning us for two or three days you know like what is your intentions behind this are you starting a war which we know he's talked about, like, are you, you know, you're riling people up. And like you said, he's a prime minister and you being a leader should be a positive role model and an example and finding ways to make things better. Not India is ways. not attacking Pakistan. It's trying to make Jammu and Kashmir part of India to make things better there. Yeah. And, you know, lifting the curfew is going to start a bloodbath and I'm going to pick ask, up a gun. But like, then asking to lift up the curfew. Why would, why would you UN ask that if you think... Lift up the curfew if you're going to just start a war. Yeah. And if you hadn't gone into German Kashmir in the first place, this wouldn't have happened. So this, the process was... For you to back off, but you keep attacking, you keep sending these boys, I'm going to use that, and, you know, and so they're not able to choose, and India's trying to make it, you know, better economy there, they're trying to put, you know, we were watching Modi's thing, and they're trying to make that a better place, and that's really what this is about, like, Pakistan needs to let India make Jammu and Kashmir part of India and make it a better place and, and do good things for it. And Pakistan needs to do good things for their own people. And we are completely against violence. Yes. Peace is always the answer. And making prosperity and good economy and great things, jobs and just good things for your people and your country. And please stop talking about war. It's not the answer. It's not going to bring anything but bloodshed and death for everybody. It's not the answer. But this, you know, we are not lawyers. We don't know. I don't want to say, like, go file a lawsuit. But if you know the law in your country, would you call us a hate crime? or a hate speech, if a common man said the exact same thing on a public street, on Twitter or Facebook, would the police be at their door in your country? Because here, I guarantee, if my, especially if my husband said this stuff, he would be locked up for days until they figured out, does he have any backing and is he going to do anything? And does he have some crowd that's going to follow him? You know, guaranteed he'd be locked up until they could clear him mm -hmm. so how does imran khan prime minister 
get away with this. Yeah. Another thing is, like, they planted, what was it, like, one billion trees mm -hmm. there? And they can go off of that. They could make Pakistan better, but he didn't go off of that in his speech. He went He started off. with that. That was the one positive thing. And then he was like, well, I have four problems, and I'm only going to state No, I have a lot problems. of problems, but I'm only going to state four. And it's like, why do you go off problems when you could go off of what you could do better for your country? Mm -hmm. And how, okay, you need financial support. You know, he was blaming the financial. Don't point the finger. At, tell us the ideas and we can give, we can yeah. fund you to support your ideas. Yeah, we're not going to fund you so you fund the terrorists. Yeah. We want to fund you so you can plant more trees. We want to fund you so you can get more jobs for the people in your country. You need, you know, better roads. You need better water supply. You need better, you know, economy. You need help in that way. Bring us your ideas. Yeah. I need help, and this is how you can help me. Who Who's going to help me? I want to make my country better. Not, if you lift the curfew, people are going to pick up guns and there will be bloodshed. What well, is that going to do for anybody? To lift up the curfew? Yes. So let us know what you think below. And if you know a little bit about the law, give us your opinion. We'd like to know. Yes. So I hope you like this. And if you like this video, don't forget to click that like button down below. Because the more you like it, the more YouTube shares our videos. And don't forget to subscribe and join our wonderful family. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.